In the last episode of New Horizons, we successfully located the stronghold, opened the portal to the end dimension, and we met with the Ender Dragon. Wasn't much of a fight, honestly, it was a pretty decisive victory. We secured the end, defeated the dragon, and collected an abundance of endstone. The endstone was transported back to the base and processed down into tungstate, which then had to be converted into tungstic acid using a new set of EV machines. And between episodes, I converted all of the tungstic acid through the blast furnace into tungsten trioxide. And then again through the blast furnace with carbon for tungsten. With a 400 second smelt time though, that was going to take a while. So in the meantime, I started working on another automation for drilling fluid. In preparation for an upcoming expedition to Mars. And as nice as this thing turned out to be, I think we're actually going to tear it down. The reason for that I'll explain later, but uh, yeah, welcome back to New Horizons, where uh, I'm not actually sure if we're going to go to Mars today. We did get our space equipment, as you can see I do look a little bit different this episode. But anyways, regardless of whether we go to Mars or not, I would like to pick up a new multi-block machine today. We are going to need some more EV components, four more electric pumps, and also some more EV circuits, which I just finished crafting actually. We need a machine hull, which should be in here. We need some number of electric motors. How many can we craft? 12? Okay, let's go for all 12. And at least four of those, is it? Is it four? Yeah, four of those have to be converted into conveyors. And there's also a fluid in this as well, right? Soldering alloy. That should be in our clean room. But yeah, what we're gonna pick up here is the multi-block ore drilling plant. This is soldering alloy, right? And you might be thinking to yourselves, wait a second. We can't even process the, the ores and materials we have and we're gonna get more. <laughs> and yes, that's exactly what we're doing. Circuit 2, I think. Recipe doesn't start either. Is there something I'm mi- Oh, there is something I'm missing. Hold on, hold on. The tungsten. I completely forgot about this. It was quite a while ago I actually set it through the blast furnace. Yeah, we got ourselves 18 tungsten ingots. 16 of those have to be converted into gears, right? Although, that being said, do we have the mold for this? It doesn't look like we do, right? Oh, I don't believe it. We don't have the mold for it. Oh yeah, check out- this is Dream Master's armor, apparently. And Dream Master, if you don't know, is the developer of the pack. Hello, Dream. I know you watch these videos. Okay, we got the mold. Uh, the other thing I didn't check is, can we fluid extract this MV? And it looks like, yes, we can. It's always tiny little recipes like that which uh, trip you up. But uh, it looks like we're good in this case. All right, we're making our tungsten gears. Now the recipe should start here, right? Yes, perfect. 20 seconds as well, that's really not too bad. But yeah, as I mentioned, this is a multi-block. Looks something like this. Very similar to our oil drilling rig, actually. There it is, the first ore drilling plant is what it's called. So what is the benefit to this one over the single blocks which we've been using previously? For a start, this one has a much larger radius. I think it starts at, yeah, it says in the tooltip there, maximum radius is 48 blocks, which I'm sure is three chunks by three chunks. There is also a fortune bonus of 4 on small ores, and it gives you 3 times as much crushed as normal processing. So basically what that means is, normally when you mine with the miners, the single blocks, it gives you regular ore. Whenever we do it with the multi-block though, it gives us crushed, that's impure, it gives us this version of the ore, the crushed. And that actually works out well for us because it saves us a processing step. And processing right now for us is a major bottleneck. We have gained a few more macerators and things, but they're kind of scattered all over the place. Ore processing is something that we have to look at probably sooner rather than later. And we still do all of the filtering manually between the, the chemical baths, the thermal centrifuges, the ore washers, the sifters. All of this stuff is still done manually. I do try to keep these machines as full as possible, but it's, I mean, <laughs> there's just so much for me to do in this world that often those things end up with a lot of downtime. Anyways, this is a, also a multi-block, so we need a maintenance hatch, we need a output bus, yeah. Output bus, item detector cover, machine controller, gas turbine, energy hatch, I think we only have one left, yes. Input bus, and then input hatch as well for fluids. And this is where the drilling fluid comes in. And I've made a tiny bit of it here, but this is only a tiny amount, despite it being 320 buckets. 
It does only cost 20 litres of lubricant though to make 5 buckets of drilling fluid, so it's much more efficient to carry the lubricant than it is to carry this amount of drilling fluid, especially considering I think that thing uses like one bucket per operation. It may not be quite that high, but it's, it's a very high consumption rate of drilling fluid. We are going to leave this distillery running, which is converting creosote oil into lubricant. And the creosote oil we currently make over at Benzene. It should be on the output of one of these distillation towers, right? I think it's the bottom one. This is phenol. This is creosote oil. Almost a full super tank, actually. Half a super tank. And all of it we're going to deposit in this tank, which is going to be distilled into lubricant. And then the lubricant we're going to take with us to power the ore drill. If that doesn't make sense right now, it will later in the episode, trust me. So after careful consideration on the best path forward, I concluded that the optimal strategy would be to hit Mars as soon as we can, hopefully safely and ideally well prepared. Since Mars can give us access to tungsten, and as we saw tungsten takes a very long time to process. So I began the pre-departure checklist for Mars, making sure to grab the rest of the things we need for the ore drill, plenty of item and fluid storage, fuel for the rocket and for our batteries, charging up the armor and lots of other miscellaneous things we would need for our adventures. Everything stops when you move. Alright, so I think the only thing we're missing here is the lubricant. We should have everything else for our expedition here. Of course, we have the tier 2 rocket, which we crafted last episode. I've given the rocket some fuel. It's a perfect day for flying here. Very clear weather. Oh yeah, here we go. Are you guys ready? 3, 2, 1. And we have liftoff. <laughs> here we go. All right, so we're selecting Mars this time, tier two planet. Let's go, we should get the brand new tier two lander. That was a terrible bounce. <laughs> that was a terrible bounce. It looks like it is daytime though, and we are not suffocating, which is a good sign. And we made it, perfect, look at this. Oh nice, you can even see Earth from here. That is cool, I don't think I've noticed that before. But yeah, our rocket again should be in the landing balloon. Let's give a waypoint to the landing site. And there is our quest. Yeah, we are just going to go underground again because the mobs will appear as soon as it gets dark down here. Speaking of darkness, we do need night vision. So yeah, to set up oxygen supplies, we need leaves for the oxygen collector. This one. That's going to go through an oxygen pipe into the bubble distributor. We give both of them some power, and this is using 160, we're generating 156, so yeah, a few more leaves. And this should be enough to sustain us here. 160 and 172, perfect. So we're now generating more oxygen than we need. And we can also set up the compressor as well, the oxygen compressor. What's the best? I placed it the wrong way. Yeah, I did. Other way. <laughs> that always happens. This way. And now I'm trapped. Well, this was quite the time skip, but look what we found. We are in the Mars dungeon, so we're after the rocket schematic. And this is going to be almost the same as the moon dungeon. Who take damage? Yeah, there's a creeper boss at the end of this thing. Again, not much loot to get, but uh, it should be pretty easy. And skeletons. Oh, hello creeper, that was close. And there's a lot of these guys, we need to be careful still. Oh no. Oh, did you guys see that? The gravity creeper. Okay, let's regen a little bit. We've got the healing axe. And this is the boss room right there. Okay, we do have some spare oxygen on us. Let's go for it. This should be the creeper, the evolved creeper. I forgot just how long this boss takes as well. It's... <laughs> oh my goodness, this takes forever. Wow, isn't this an interesting mechanic? <laughs> Just stand here and press right click forever. One shot left. There we go. 
boss number two defeat. This should be the key to the chest. Let's see what we get. Yep, we got the tier three rocket schematic. And nothing really... Actually, I'm going to take the music disc again. Strad, that is a very good track. Rainbow Curry, I guess we take that. Oh, and you know what? I'm actually told these creeper eggs are very useful. We can use these things to generate power. I don't know how we pick them up, though. If it's possible to even pick them up. Oh, and that's exactly what we're here for. I knew it was going to be through the wall. It normally is uh, fairly close to these dungeons. Underground and Mars, we also have that stuff over there, Bacterial Sludge. And we should have some buckets on us. We don't need a whole lot of it right now. I don't. I want to be careful going down there. Oh yeah, this place does not look very inviting. <laughs> but we only need a couple of buckets of this, actually. I've just had an idea. Can we pick up these eggs with the one focus of equal trade? No? Aww. Oh. There's definitely something I'm missing. We can definitely use those, I know for a fact. So I also did do a decent amount of prospecting around this place. And yeah, look at this. We found a substantial amount of ores here. One of those somewhere here being Desh. We do need to keep prospecting because we're after two Desh veins next to each other. Yeah, there is another one there. It contains our tungstate and shelite, the main material we're actually after here on Mars. And using the new multi-block we crafted, we should be able to pick up more than one Desh vein at a time. And that should be more efficient than having to move it every now and then. Although I do want to stay here for a while and gather as many ores as we can get. Nickel, sulfur, galena. More tetrahedrite, more iron, more redstone. I think we will actually pick up a redstone vein. Oh, a torch. Interesting. This must be a... No, that's a Minecraft torch. I was going to say that's a Galacticraft torch, but no. This is actually a... Yeah, that is actually a vanilla torch. That's interesting. I didn't think you can find this here. So with the ore drill set up on a double dash vein, I went out to place the single block miners, and we have those on a redstone vein and another dash vein. We made sure to chunk load, mark on the map, and also mark our little booklet. I refilled our tanks of oxygen and then went out to manually mine using our trusty hammer. And I targeted specifically a uraninite vein, effectively uranium. And it really didn't take too long to fill three backpacks worth and clear pretty much the whole ore vein. And so now you're joining me here at a quartz vein, Ceratus Quartz. Can you guys guess what this is for? I know, I keep saying we're close to applied energistics, and we actually are. There is a small possibility that we get applied energistics storage next episode. We will see. Okay, how much deeper is this ore vein? Four levels? Mm, do we want to get the full thing? <laughs> I'm quite wary of how much uh, space we have actually to carry all the stuff back. Okay, we're back here at the ore drill, and it is still running. That is a very good sign. How many ores do we have by now? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm glad I placed two compressed chests at least here. Oh, that is excellent. That is glorious. Oh, nice. It looks like we hit a salt vein as well. Yeah, what are we next to here? Dash. Yeah, so this is the double dash vein. We got salt, gold, tetrahedrite, sulfur, beryllium, another sulfur. I'm not sure what's over here, actually. Yeah, I'm trying to decide what we should do from here because I... I... Well, here's the thing, right? We have another two destinations to go to today for the Tier 4 EV quests. We have to also visit Phobos and Deimos. Deimos? And those two planets are actually the moons of Mars. And the reason we want to go there is because we can get pure uranium. Yeah, we can get u straight uranium-238 ore, which is definitely something we need here. And it's actually one of the other reasons we came to Mars. Uranium, the schematic, and shelite is the three primary things we need from this trip. So I want to make sure... 
I thought that was a fallen meteor, but no. <laughs> Looks like we got ourselves a slimeling. Actually, you know what? We're going to grab this guy. Hey. Wait, can we not grab him? How do we grab him? Oh, maybe you can't get him in the soul vial. I know that you can tame him. Like, he's asking for a, a door, which I unfortunately don't have here. Okay, over here at minor one, or no, minor two. HV1 is minor two. This one looks like it is finished. And yeah, check this out. I didn't mention this earlier, but we can actually get straight titanium dust. And then this, I'm assuming we can blast furnace for hot titanium. So we don't have to ever use rutile again. Well, we are still going to use rutile, of course, but uh, this gives us a much more simple way to get a lot of titanium. We're getting dash, we're getting antimony. Bismuth, that's going to be useful in ivy, I, I guess. Nice. I think we can pick this up, though. Oh, maybe I just ran out of fuel. We might have just run out of benzene. All right, well, I'm going to babysit these miners a bit. Maybe uh, mine out a few more ore veins by hand. I want to at least wait for the multi-block to finish, and then I think we're going to head out to Deimos and Phobos, which I guess is those... Is that Deimos there? That's the sun. That's the overworld. I guess it is, right? <laughs> So I went ahead and collected all the miners, our oxygen supplies. There shouldn't be anything left here. <laughs> this guy's followed us up here as well. Let's make sure we refuel the rocket. Oh boy, I really hope we have everything here. You know what, I'm almost tempted to go down and check, but I'm going to trust myself. I'm pretty sure we're safe here. We're safe to go. Right? I wonder if this guy survives the blast. You think he survives? <laughs> we have liftoff again. I don't know where he went. I don't see him. So my original intention was to go straight to Deimos, but actually I've just had an idea. We're going to go back to our base. Even though we do save fuel if we go straight from Mars to Deimos. Yeah, we're going to go back to the overworld first. We got a different landing spot to last time. Still close. One of these days we are going to make it in there. I, I, <laughs> I just tried to jump thinking we had zero gravity. It's been, it's been a while for me on Mars. Okay, so what we are going to do here, actually, is drop off all the ore veins, the full chests. And there's a few of them here. This one. This one, I think, is our main chest. We want to keep that one on us. This is the other output from the multi-block. We'll keep this here. This one is half full. I think there's another half full in here as well. Let's consolidate everything. Okay, so obviously when we return to space, we do need oxygen equipment no matter where we go. Whether it's Mars, whether it's Phobos, the Moon or any of the upcoming planets we're about to visit with the next year of rockets. Well, I shouldn't say about to visit, it's going to be a while. <laughs> I think with the exception of Ross 128b, which has an atmosphere similar to our own in the overworld. We do actually have a solution for oxygen though. If we take some ectoplasm, we cook this through the blast furnace with a piece of iron dust. Please start, 30 seconds. Then we're going to take a bucket of the bacterial sludge we collected from Mars. And we also need a titanium rod, which we have. So the EBF gave us a spectre ingot, and this has to go through an EV assembling machine. I think it's just one bucket of bacterial sludge, titanium rod, spectre ingot. 30 seconds again. And this crafts the spectre key from random things, which should be a quest. And this thing can actually generate us a personal dimension accessible from anywhere. So I think we hold right click and it's going to teleport us. Teleports us to a big white box. We are trapped in here, right? There's nothing in here. However, this is the perfect place to have oxygen, since we can access this place on Mars or on any other planet. I did forget the oxygen supplies, though. They're in a chest at our base. Yeah, so basically, even though we still need oxygen, we don't have to carry it around with us everywhere. Okay, now we should be all set up here. We've got batteries in each one. We've got a battery buffer and a gas turbine to power the battery buffer if we ever need to charge the batteries inside here. We are even going to keep a spare oxygen tank here, just in case a spare battery. And so now anytime we need to refill oxygen, all we need to do is use the spectre key on whatever planet we're in. And in theory, we should never run out of oxygen, as long as we're uh, paying attention <laughs> enough. <laughs> fingers crossed though, fingers crossed. So the other issue I would like to solve while we are here is the lack of rocket fuel. We're only we're down to our last 16 cells. However, if we craft up a advanced world accelerator, you can think of these things like a time in a bottle, but it costs a tremendous amount of power to run. They are actually super useful for things like crops and bees. Uh, so we will end up using these things eventually, but we don't need them for their intended purpose. They are also very expensive. Apparently, we don't have any of this stuff. We have the robot arms. 
Okay, after some crafting, this should allow us to craft the Advanced World Accelerator and hopefully collect the quest. We are going to save this for later. But all we need is the quest reward, which is over... No, it's over here. And this gives us 64 cells of rocket fuel. Why it gives us 60... And a lemon cake. <laughs> Why it gives us 64 cells of rocket fuel, I have no idea. And similar to the oxygen, we shouldn't have to worry about rocket fuel ever again. Because after the tier 2 rocket, we actually switch to something else. CN3H703. Oh, this is the one with a funky chemical plant. Monomethyl hydrazine. Nah, we don't want to look at that right now. That's scary stuff. Oh, hey, Creeper. I seen you on the thumbnail of last episode. Was it you or was it your brother? <laughs> Alright, welcome everyone to Phobos. Hopefully we get a good bounce. Yes, there we go. <laughs> and you know what we actually should have brought last time is a hopper. Because occasionally this thing can actually bug out the landing balloon. Yeah, guys, be careful with the landing balloon on tier 2 planets with a tier 2 rocket. I find that if you don't let it sit completely still before you exit the vehicle, then you can sometimes not be able to pick up the rocket. But uh, if you find yourself in that situation, just place a hopper underneath and it should be able to extract it. Obviously, if you're actually carrying a hopper, which we really should be. But yeah, we're on Phobos here and that is a very large... I guess that is Mars, right? Let's grab the stone for the quest. Dimensional goal Phobos. And you know what? I don't remember where we originally bounced. Ideally, we take off from the same spot we land at. I'm just going to mark here. Is this potentially the landing spot? We might land a bit wonky... Uh, back in the overworld, but we'll see. Aha, so here we can get Draconium, which also contains Electrotine, Ventium, Jade, and of course Draconium Ore. Gold again, and Uranium. This is exactly what we're here for. Let's keep scouting around to see if we can get an ideal location for the drill again. Oh, change of plans here. Oh, look at this. I shouldn't have looked at that guy. He is two shot though. Somewhat comforting. Anyways, yeah, very slight change of plan. We're going to place it here next to a uranium, a two bauxite veins, gold, or a harricane. And that does contain a lot of garbage in there, like the uh, mirabilite. That's really useless, but um, <laughs> the or harricane itself is actually pretty useful. Especially for things like rotor blades, turbine blades, which we're going to be crafting here pretty soon. So yeah, we're going to set up the ore drill again. Input boss, output boss. Almost the exact same way as the oil rig, but there's a few key differences here. One of those being the need for drilling fluid, which we're going to set up here on site. You might have caught a glimpse of this uh, when it was set up on Mars. So yeah, what we basically do here is we give it stone dust with the use of this barrel. This goes into a mixer. There's a conveyor on module on the top to pull the dust in. Then we have an ultra low voltage fluid tank. This is just here to fill water cells with water. That's collected via a water reservoir, which is effectively like the Ender IO reservoir, except this thing can extract as fast as you can, well, Basically, this thing has infinite. It's like the sink from Cooking for Blockheads. Is that the mod? So the higher tier of pump you have on the top, the, the faster you can extract. Not actually necessary for this. It's just a lot more compact than carrying four blocks around. Then we have a gas turbine to power the mixer. We have our gas turbine to power the multi-block itself. Then we also have the output bus. This is where the multi-block deposits the ores to. And that is going to go into the compressed chest like what we had previously. I think we have some more in here. And we can do extract whatever we want. I normally pick blue. And these conduits like to connect to just about every single thing around here. We also have a trash can in this setup, which wasn't actually useful on Mars, but it is useful here. And the reason for that is because this thing will give us a, a like so much stone dust, more than we know what to do with. Most of which we want to be... Not there. Most of which we want to go back into the stone barrel to be recycled and made into drilling fluid. So this we want a priority of 10, the highest priority on the network and insert blue. I'm getting quite aware of the oxygen supplies by now, but I think we're okay. And then on still a higher priority than the chests, since we don't want any stone dust appearing in the compressed chest, we can filter this for also stone dust. So this is just for any overflow. So basically what is going to happen here is the output bus is going to prioritize all the stone dust to the barrel first to be converted to drilling fluid. Any extra will go into the trash can and all the ores will be deposited in the compressed chests. Okay, so now what we're missing is a couple of super tanks. One is for lubricant, which has to be inserted into the mixer. So that can go underneath. And we can automatically insert lubricant. 
One of them is for benzene, which is used to power both of the gas turbines. That can go right around here, and we have some fluid conduits for those. And the other one here is just excess drilling fluid, which I had previously. I don't actually want to set up to use this thing, we're just going to extract from it. Because this is what was in the input hatch previously when it was on Mars. And also the output buffer of the mixer. So this is just going to be on extract. Yeah, and the last thing we have to give the mixer is water cells, which have two conveyors on the tank and on the mixer. And these are on export allow input, so it passes the empty cells back and forth. This runs the recipe for drilling fluid and gives it to the ore drilling plant here. And then we also need drilling or mining pipe, I guess it's called. Similar to the single block miners, which can go in the input boss. We have to perform maintenance. Don't forget about your soldering alloy. Soldering... <laughs> soldering iron. Soldering iron. This thing. Okay, running fine. And the last thing is an item detector cover. So it only runs if the output boss has less than 12 items because this thing, again, is a multi-block, so it will void if the output boss is full. And then machine controller, enable with redstone and safe mode. And it's running, perfect. Six seconds per operation. And we should start to see some of the Phobos ores here. I do want to set a priority on these compressed chests. Let's set this to one and this one to... We'll keep this one at zero. And this one, unlike the single blocks actually, will actually chunk load itself. Just not the chunk it's in. So we, we still have to chunk load this chunk, but then these eight around it, it will automatically chunk load. We want to set a waypoint. And I believe the way that this... Oh, our oxygen is dangerously low. Oh my... <laughs> oh my goodness, did you see that? The first tank was empty, top left. <laughs> that could have been close after just talking about how confident we are with the oxygen. So I believe the way this operates is it, it chooses one chunk. I think it's like the top left, and then it goes chunk by chunk. Are we starting to get stuff? Yeah, we're starting to get uranium-238. Perfect. So from this point, I went out to place the single block miners again, making sure to maximize our efficiency on Phobos to hopefully reduce the number of times we have to visit here. And again, it's not like we can process all this, maybe ever, at least until they get ore processing, that's for sure. But the way I see it, it's better to have too many ores than not enough ores. Oh yeah, and that is the spirits up there. You see that behind me? That's where you can get the ectoplasms. But yeah, I think with that, it's also a good point to wrap up the episode. So yeah, I reckon I'm going to be here for another few hours, at least for me. I'm going to let the ore drill finish and probably move the miners another, well, at least once more. Basically, I'm just going to max out the storage capacity on the compressed chest that we have with us. And I want to thank you guys all for watching. I hope to see you all in the next episode of New Horizons where hopefully I did remember to refill these oxygen tanks, which are getting very low again. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.